Yes, Lord, we pray that you reign in our lives. I don't know which area of your life you want the Lord to reign, but I want you to mention it. That you want Him to reign in a certain part of your life. It's so important to be specific. Wakati Yesu alikuwa nauliza watu ni kufanyia nini? Always he was asking, what can I do for you? Na wengine walisema, I want to see. What do you want the Lord to do for you this morning? Mention it in the name of Jesus. There's a specific thing that the Lord needs to do in your life right now in the name of Jesus. Even as we tell him to tawala, you know, we are telling the Lord, God, oh, this area, this part, this day, we pray that you reign in the name of Jesus Christ. Just commit yourself unto the Lord. Oh, there's an issue in your heart right now. I know. Above all things, kuna kile abacho, kiko juu ya mambo mengine. I know there's something that is bigger than all the others. That thing that you want the Lord to reign over your life over, I want you to mention it in the name of the Lord. Oh, let him reign. Let the Lord reign. Let the Lord reign in that issue. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will reign over you. In the name of Jesus. Oh. Oh yes, Lord, thank you. We pray that you reign. Tawala Baba. Yes, Lord, you reign, oh God. We lift it to you, Lord. We pray that you reign. Yes, Lord, reign. Tawala Maisha Yangu. every situation. In Jesus' name we have prayed and believed. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you. God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I want us to appreciate the praise team. They've really, really tried. Thank you. Appreciate them. If you're near them, uh, just tell them that, that that's wonderful. Praise God. Amen. Good to see you. Ready to receive the word of God. And I want to uh, to read from the book of uh, John chapter 8, the book of John chapter 8. Uh, John chapter 8 is uh, the story of the woman who was caught in the, in the adultery. Um, uh, alishikwa uh, akiwa katika kitendo kile ambacho uh, kilikuwa kimekatazwa uh, na the law. Aha. Let me read John chapter 8. Verse 3, going forward, the Bible says, When the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, they made her to stand in the middle of the court and put the case before him. Teacher, they said, this woman has been caught in the very act of adultery. Now, Moses in the law commanded us that such women who are offenders, shall be stoned to death. But what do you say we do with her? What is your sentence? This they said to try or to test him, hoping they might find a charge on him which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger. However, when they persisted with their question, he raised himself up and said, let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. Then he bent down and went on writing on the ground with his finger. They listened to him and they began going out. Conscience, stric conscience stricken one by one from the oldest down to the last one of them till Jesus was left alone with the woman standing there before him in the center of the court. When Jesus raised himself up, he said to her, Woman, where are your accusers? Has no one condemned you? She answered, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, 
I do not condemn you either. Go on your way, and from now on, sin no more. There are things that I want to speak to you about today, and it's a gift of no condemnation. Say, no condemnation. Look at your neighbor and tell them, no condemnation. Turn to the other one and ask them, what do you have to condemn me for? The, 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 we, we are living at a time when, uh, if you look around, people are good. And not only this time, even this is humanity. This is a history of humanity. We like to condemn. We like to condemn people. We like to show how sinful they are. We, we like to put them at the center of the court. We write on our social media walls and we say how bad somebody is. We react and show that we don't know love as we are supposed to know it. Now here is a group of the holy people who have brought a sinful woman, the Pharisees and the scribes. And these are the people that Jesus did not like. If you notice in many places, Jesus reacted very harshly towards Pharisees and scribes. They have caught a woman in the act, but they have only brought the woman. We wonder where the man is. It's because this culture did not uphold a woman. They thought that a woman is a lower being. In fact, every Jew, on waking up in the morning, if you are a man, the first thing you said as you stretch yourself, you said, I thank God I'm not a woman, or a Gentile, or a dog. That was their culture. That is where women were placed, the outcasts. And you can see even the language of the Bible. The woman is not really placed where she ought to be. She's not counted when men are counted. And uh, it's a culture that was uh, chauvinistic, if we say. Chauvinistic, if you can remember, means it exalts one gender. Now, they're bringing a woman who has been caught in the act. And this woman, I want you to see yourself there. That there's a time that things will not work well for you. And fingers are likely to point at you. In your life, as you go on with life, even in your homes, you will find that there's a situation that will find you where this woman is at this time. And people are saying, let us see the justice that is going to be done to this one. Let us see what the teacher has to say about her. But we have a question here to ask. According to Jesus, he's thinking differently, but we have a question. What should come first? Is it condemnation? Or is it Go and sin no more. What comes first? And Jesus reacts to this man in a way that, ah, I like that. That when this woman is down, and they're waiting for his response, he writes something on the ground. Not many people know what Jesus wrote on the ground. Actually, he wrote twice. Write, say something, goes back and writes. He must have been writing down there that... There is now no condemnation for you. For the law of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. He was writing something down. <clears throat> Remember, Jesus is God. He can see right through the heart of the Pharisees. Maybe some of them, how come they are so angry? Pengine alikuwa amewakata wengine wa. Kwa hivyo, wamepata nafasi sasa. They have a chance now. To revenge. Pekine wale ambao walikuwa pale. Ni watu ambao. Hiyo siku. Had committed adultery. But because they are men. But because they are Pharisees. But because they are scribes. Now they stand at a position where they call themselves holy and righteous. But Jesus. And this is why people hated Jesus. Because they expected Jesus to quote the law of Moses. Actually, the law demanded, if such a case happens, let that woman be caught. 
Let her be stoned to death. So they had come with their stones. But Jesus says, let the one who has not seen be the first one to throw a stone. And they start going away one by one. They remember, hey, the kama to tatajwa. It's like we are just about to be mentioned. There are things in life that you keep quiet about, especially if you think that this thing is going to expose me. I'm supposed to speak, but let me not speak because I'm also a victim of the same. So the man started walking away. Jesus is left with this woman. Now this woman is thinking, this one now is the one who knows everything. Therefore, is going to condemn me. But Jesus gives her a gift, and this gift is called the gift of no condemnation. He says, has anyone condemned you? And the woman says, no, Lord. No one has condemned me. And Jesus says, I also will not condemn you. What I will tell you is that go and sin no more. Jesus first showed love to her. That I am the one who is right to condemn you. But I don't condemn you. And this one brings a very good thing. I want you to pick and this will help you the rest of your life. We do not overcome sin by trying to fight it like firefighters. We overcome sin by receiving the gift of no condemnation. When you know that you are not condemned, you are empowered to sin no more. Did you get what I'm saying? I want you to look at somebody and say these exact words so that this, this sinks in their heart, in their mind. Look at somebody. Tell them. Receive the gift of no condemnation. Now, go and sin no more. Turn to another one who you think is a sinner and tell them, receive the gift of no condemnation. Now go and sin no more. <laughs> that is how the kingdom of God works. That you first of all know God loves me. Ukiona mungu wana kupenda, hautataka kumkosea. Are we together? Praise the Lord. The, the people who have done good to you, let me tell you, it's hard to do wrong to them. You just remember, this guy is so good to me, let me not do harm to them. Does it work that way? There are people you wouldn't just do anything wrong to them because you know they have been so good to you. Are there people in your life like that? They need something to you. You cannot wrong them. See how they have extended their care to you. When you think of the care that they have done, you cannot do anything wrong to them. That's how God works. When you understand that he loves you so much, unconditionally, when that settles in your mind, because you know he loves you. It is not the other way around. It is not the way of the Pharisees where they tell you do 10, 20, 30 things. The understanding of the love of God is more powerful. You see, this woman knew the law, but did not fear the law. Went ahead and did what she did. But it is now the encounter with Jesus that transforms her life. Praise the Lord. I want you for a moment think of who was your best teacher in school? Can you remember? A teacher who really, if you had to give a gift to teachers, who would you give? Say her name or his name. Primary school? Mm -hmm. Yeah, secondary school, college. There's a person you can remember, teacher. In your village where you've been brought up, is there a person who has been kind to you? Maybe they paid your education. They held your, they, they, they helped your mother. They helped your father when they were in deep trouble. That person will never get out of your mind. If you find yourself in a group that want to do something wrong to that person, you will tell them not to. That is how the kingdom of God works. You, you receive love first. And then you are empowered not to sin. And this is how you overcome sin. Thinking about how God loves you. How to 
And even as you work here, as you work here, you know, we talk to people in other shops, eh? and you may think that this uh, is not a good job. Some of you may think that way. But I've seen people who are underpaid, very much underpaid, very much underpaid. They receive half of what you receive. I've seen people who don't get any drink or any food within the shop. So I don't know how they survive throughout the day. But I see it different here. You know, you may never know the advantage of something until you leave it. There are some of you who have left here. And uh, of course a pastor knows many things. They, we meet with them and they regret. I, I don't know what they were thinking they will do after leaving here. But something did not work out. And uh, there is no chance of coming back. Sometimes we don't think that way. We just see mistakes. We just see what we don't have. But I want you to be different. I want to see that uh, your employer, in his capacity, has shown you goodness. Has the employer shown you goodness? Is there a goodness you can trace in this shop? Let's talk for one minute. Is there a goodness you can see? Anything good? Anything good? Ask your neighbor, what, what, what good do you see here? I think this is, this is, this is a serious moment. <laughs> it, it is very serious. What good do you see here? Now, anytime when you want to do something bad, think about that goodness and you will stop. Because there is a goodness that is there. And that is the way you live. Think about goodness first. Think about the love of God first. And then you'll be empowered not to sin anymore. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, how loving you are. Thank you for extending your love towards us this morning. Your love is so great, oh God. Your love is so wonderful. That even when we are standing right at the center of mistakes, right at the center of darkness, things that we did knowingly, yet... You remind us of your love. That you still love us. Father, we surrender to you, O oh God. Like this woman, O oh God. We receive your freedom. And we go now, Father. So that we glorify your name wherever we shall be. As I pray, probably this is your message. You feel of this woman. But thank you, God, for not condemning me. But giving me your love instead. Setting me free to sin no more. Maybe you are that person and you are saying, Today I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Raise up your hand and I am going to pray with you. And your life will never be the same again. I know that this message is speaking to you. I want you to think about the goodness of God. I want you to surrender to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. This is a prayer that I want us all to make. And this one I request all of us. We will raise our hands, all of us. We will raise our hands in the presence of God. I like it when it's settling in our hearts. And I want you to say these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I appreciate your goodness. I appreciate your love. I appreciate your care. I appreciate the fact that that you know me by name. I appreciate the fact that you have written me at the parts of your head. I appreciate your love towards me. I know I'm not a very good person, but you still love me. I know I've wronged you in many ways, but I still receive your love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving me. I receive the gift of no condemnation from you. Thank you for the power. Thank you for the grace to sin no more. I commit myself to you to walk in your way. To receive that which you paid for me at the cross every day of my life. 
Amen, amen. Let's appreciate the Lord. That's a great prayer. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you.